welcome. In this episode, I'm going to do something a little different in that I am going to share stories revolving around an area near the Joshua Tree National Park in Southern California. These stories were emailed to me by a viewer who has had strange things happen to him and his family in a desert canyon near the park. I'd like to thank Jay for sending in his story and allowing me to share it, along with some very interesting photos of what looks to be the creature that resides there. Also, if you'd like to help support the channel, click on the join button below. Alright, let's get into today's stories. As I mentioned, these stories take place in Joshua Tree National Park. Located in southeastern California, east of San Bernardino and Los Angeles, Joshua Tree National Park covers a total area of 795,156 acres, which equates to 1,242 square miles or 3,217 square kilometers. The Mojave Desert and the Colorado Desert come together within the park and the little San Bernardino Mountains run along its southwest border. It consists of desert terrain. Jay has told me that there are a lot of unexplained encounters, disappearances, and deaths in Joshua Tree National Park, so it's no surprise to him that its neighboring deserts, canyons, and mountains also contain strange mysteries and encounters of their own. He sent me a series of emails not only detailing his family's exploration of a cave, which led to his nephew having a face-to-face -face encounter with a strange creature, but also something that he experienced himself while there. Also, there is a story a co-worker told him about the area. Being that he took the time to write out his story and that his emails are so well written, I'm going to let him tell the story himself by reading the emails he sent to me. His first email detailing the encounter with the creature reads as follows. My family and I enjoy the outdoors. As I mentioned, we live in Southern California. We are surrounded by mountains, deserts, and canyons. We spend a lot of time camping and exploring the local canyons during our cooler months. We also enjoy going for short day getaways. Our usual spots are very isolated and lonely. We had a couple of favorite areas that we would always go to. We enjoy the remote and peaceful isolation. Keep this fact in mind. A few years ago, heavy rains caused major damage to the main paved road leading into the canyons, and subsequently we had to find a new area to camp. There are a few dirt roads that remained open, so we decided to find a new spot for the time being. We found the perfect area that met all our preferences. It was February of 2019 during a hike into the canyons while we were specifically looking for a trail that might lead to the top of a certain canyon. We happened across a medium-sized opening at the bottom of a canyon. The opening was oval-shaped and big enough for an adult to crawl in. We, it was seven of us in total, it was myself with a few nephews, my niece and her boyfriend. Our ages ranged from my age, mid-40s, to my youngest nephew that was around 12 years old. Since we had not planned on such exploration, we didn't have flashlights with us. Nonetheless, this did not deter us from exploring that opening. Curiosity got the best of us and we decided to crawl in and find out how deep that opening was. My 20-year-old nephew had a headlamp in his backpack so he led the way. The rest of us used our cell phone lights to guide us. As we crawled in about six to eight feet, the opening led us into a narrow cave. We were extremely surprised to say the least. And now this turned into an unexpected cave exploring adventure. We were all excited about the idea of exploring the cave. We walked in a good distance and noticed that this cave had a few caverns and large dark openings towards the top. Some areas appeared to go straight to the top of the canyon probably a good 200 plus feet. It was very impressive and yet felt strangely eerie. I told my nephews to record the experience. I also mentioned that it would be neat to capture any footage of a desert fox or maybe a bobcat in there. I just told them to be very cautious as we explored. 
My 20-year-old nephew continued ahead at a certain point as the rest of us took a minute to record our surroundings. We were at a point in the cave where it was necessary to climb about four feet to continue forward. This was the spot my nephew continued alone. A few moments later, my nephew was saying something. We couldn't really hear him. He sounded muffled. So we yelled for him to walk toward us. When he got closer, we heard him say, Uncle, there is someone in here. There was a slight pause. Then he said, or something. I asked him, what do you mean? I continued to ask, did you see a fox, a coyote, what? By now, my nephew had walked back to the group. He looked visibly shaken up and very scared. He answered and said, no, uncle, I know what those animals look like. This was what I thought for a second was a person, but no, it was definitely not a person. He continued, it was a strange creature like a human on two feet while slightly crouched looking straight at me. He then nervously and frightenedly said, uncle, I don't know what I just saw. What the F was that? I tried calming him down as best I could. Then he said, let's get out of here, uncle. We shouldn't stay in here. Believe me, I had a strong desire to go after whatever my nephew saw, but my gut feeling was even stronger and it said, nope, not today. Recalling the missing 411 stories of people who have gone missing once they separate, I was wise to listen to my gut instinct of danger. So we quickly got out. My nephew seriously appeared as if he was going to have a panic attack. I kept calming him down. When he finally managed to compose himself, he gave me a description of what he saw. He stated that it was probably six or seven feet tall and that it was either a grayish or tanned color. He said he couldn't tell if it was skin or hair all over its body and the strangest part was that the lower part of its face was red in color. He continued to explain that there was a bend in the cave and that when he maneuvered around it, the creature was there. Its back was up against the cave wall and it was in a crouching position. As soon as his light hit it, it ran deeper into the cave darkness. My nephew said he even heard its feet hitting the ground as it ran. For whatever reason, my nephew had shut his phone off, so he didn't capture the bipedal creature he saw on video. My thought on this encounter is that perhaps this cryptid was going to attack my nephew thinking he was alone. And it is very possible that at the last second, it either heard the rest of us or picked up our scent. Realizing my nephew wasn't alone, it fled. I do believe this encounter would have been very different had my nephew been alone. As for the red lower part of its face, that's a very unusual color for a creature to have. So maybe its mouth was opened exposing the red interior of its mouth, or it was eating something and what my nephew saw was a blood-soaked face. Fast forward to March of this year. We have continued to explore the aforementioned cave. Well, all of us except my nephew that had the encounter. He has never gone back. We have gone pretty far in the cave and have yet to hit the end. We have no idea how deep this cave is. In all these years we have explored this cave, we have yet to see whatever my nephew saw that day in February of 2019. We have, however, heard strange low deep growls and, on an occasion while exploring at night, my friend and his teen son saw a large silhouette trying to exit the cave through that opening. As soon as my friend's bright flashlight shone into the opening, whatever this thing was, it quickly retreated back inside the cave. The night I just mentioned has been the only time we have explored at night. This thing was not happy to have us in there, especially not at night. After spending a few minutes inside the cave, it started growling and making strange sighing noises. I know this sounds crazy, but the growling sounds so powerful, deep, and disturbing it reminds me of certain movies I've seen with dragons. That low, powerful, rumbling growl they use is exactly what came to mind. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's a dragon, I'm simply giving you an idea of what it sounds like. I've looked up dozens of animal noises to compare it with, and once again the closest thing would be a low dragon-like powerful growl. I purchased a trail cam and decided to leave it out there. 
We were beyond curious to see what it would capture coming out of that cave. And capture it did. The night I left the trail cam, it took several pictures. These are the pictures I will include. I have shown these pictures to friends, family, co-workers, and they agree that there is definitely a strange creature's face captured in one of the pictures. And though it is partially blocked by what is perhaps a claw or hand, it is very noticeable. People that have seen it say it looks reptilian or dragon-like. I wonder if I have possibly captured a desert reptilian type creature such as one in encounters I've listened to that people have had in Arizona and parts of California. I agree that it does look very reptilian. I will do my best to explain the pictures you are about to see. Please let me know what you think and if you have heard of such things. As far as I know, this is the only picture of such a creature. I have yet to find one on Google or YouTube. That is the end of his first email but not even close to the end of his story. I will put the pictures up at the end of the video. The next email I will read details some more information that pertains to his story and his investigation of the area. It reads as follows. I returned a week or so after and left my trail cam in the same area for three days. Unfortunately, nothing was caught on video or picture mode. This doesn't surprise me because it is a common belief that these cryptids are extremely good at avoiding cameras. I'm happy I was able to capture the pictures I shared with you. And just to clarify, we were never on a monster quest. Don't get me wrong, I do believe there are different types of cryptids that share this world with us. But like I mentioned before, we were just enjoying the outdoors and exploring nature. It just so happened that we were meant to find this particular cave. And the creature or creatures decided to make their presence known. So me, being of a curious nature, won't miss the opportunity to investigate and get as much information as I can regarding this type of enigma. I am also very careful and intelligent on my approach. I've learned to trust my gut instincts and will leave immediately if I sense danger. I really believe my patience and careful determination has paid off by yielding me these thought-provoking and interesting pictures. The only regret I have that day, I left my trail cam in my haste, I didn't activate video mode as well. But lesson learned. I will continue to monitor this cave and canyon, and I am confident I will eventually capture videos of these things. My theory is that this cave, as you mentioned, might very possibly be connected to an even larger cave system, making it the perfect place for many of these creatures to hide and live in. Also, if you would like to share my encounter and pictures with your subscribers, I believe we have the right to know about these things. My hope is that perhaps more people can come forward with similar encounters and perhaps even pictures or videos. After all, the forests are not the only place strangeness happens. That is the end of his second email. Jay also told me that his nephew suffered from extreme hair loss after his encounter. He lost all the hair on top of his head, his eyebrows, and his facial hair. When he saw a doctor, he was told it was COVID-related. However, tests could not conclusively prove this. Jay believes, as I do as well, the hair loss is due to extreme stress from his encounter. His nephew was so traumatized over what he saw that he refuses to go back to the canyon and with good reason. I don't think any of us can blame him. The doctor did mention that the hair loss could be permanent. Jay said his nephew is doing well now, though. Moving on, the next email he sent that I want to share talks about him going back to the area in February of 2021, where he found physical evidence of a creature. It reads as follows. Back in February of 2021, while we were hiking near the aforementioned cave, I noticed a terrible stench. We looked around thinking we would undoubtedly find a dead animal. After searching the area, I noticed a strange looking patch of hair on the ground. After further examination of the patch, we could not conclude what it came from. It did, however, have a rancid stench. I placed the patch of hair in a sandwich bag and placed it inside my truck under the passenger seat. We found no signs of a possible struggle, 
blood, disturbed dirt, or other indicators. Later that day, as I cleaned out my truck and went to retrieve the bag, it was gone. I have no clue as to what happened to it. Keep in mind, when I placed it in my truck, I was alone. That is the end of that email. The strong smell Jay describes is something that happens a lot during cryptid encounters. He later told me regarding the stench, quote, I will never forget that stench it had. It literally smelled like 1,000 rotting corpses, end quote. The way he describes the smell is consistent to other stories I've heard where people describe it much the same way, pungent and putrid. He went on to tell me that he found some skin along with the hair and describes it as being black and thick, and that there were two canine-like puncher marks in the ground. This led me to believe, based on the appearance of the hair and with the canine holes, that it could have been a dogman. Jay also got that impression and believes it could have also belonged to a Sasquatch. He believes whatever the fur belonged to was the victim of a nasty bite, but there were no other signs of a wounded creature. The next email of Jay's I want to share is the one containing the encounter his co-worker told him about that involves the co-worker's friend coming face to face with a creature. Also, the email starts with a comment about something I mentioned to him he told me about the fur, and it's that there might be more than one cryptid in that area. The email reads as follows. You alluded to the possibility of different cryptids roaming the area. I completely agree. I have heard of people reporting strange footprints in the nearby deserts and canyons. I also heard of a lady that while viewing the mountains and canyons near Joshua Tree while her husband was driving down I-10, reported seeing a huge black bipedal creature walking near the top of a canyon and lost sight as it walked behind boulders. I've done my research of this area and have found no reports of strange encounters. Now I realize that doesn't mean they haven't happened since many people rather keep silent rather than be ridiculed. And like I mentioned, we have been going to these canyons for a couple of decades now. I did however find the name to the place we visit on Google Earth. And the name says it all. I really doubt that these places are given random names. Whoever is in charge of naming them knows exactly what they are doing. I will not include the name in order to keep this place secret, as there are many people who might cause damage or vandalism to such a spot. I will share the only story I was told by my co-worker regarding the canyons I visit. He stated the following encounter to me. My good friend took a girl on a date to the canyons to stargaze. They arrive late at night around 10 or 11 p.m. While they sat around and talked a bit, they started hearing strange noises outside the car. My friend got out and checked their surroundings. My friend said he heard strange growling and hissing noises. He was frightened and immediately left. My co-worker continued saying, My friend returned a week later with his girl to the same spot. They figured it wouldn't happen again. As they sat in the car, the same noises started again. This time my friend had a spotlight and he proceeded to investigate the strange sounds. As he exited the car, he heard something moving around in the dark. His girlfriend was scared and told him to get back inside the car and leave, but his curiosity got the best of him. He continued looking for whatever was making these strange growling and hissing sounds. The dark of night and a few desert trees and shrubs made it hard to pinpoint where it was. My friend shut his light off and waited until he heard the next growl. He quickly turned his light on and pointed in the direction of the growl. He said he saw a reptilian-like bipedal creature with huge eyes, fangs, and claws growling at him. He couldn't tell if it was the light reflecting off the eyes or if they just glowed red, but at the same time he was frightened and ran back to the car and left. My co-worker stated that his friend told him he will never go back to those canyons. His friend told him in Spanish, and sorry if I butcher this, Aya esta el diablo, which translated into English means, the devil is there. Jay goes on to say, What I find interesting about this encounter is the fact that without me mentioning the location, 
My co-worker's friend told him exactly where he drove and gave him the information. Turn by turn is the exact place, or for the sake of argument, very near where we found the cave. His friend also mentioned that the creature was between 5 and 6 feet tall. I think that it is probable that this man saw the same creature or creatures my nephew saw inside the cave and the same creature or creatures my trail cam took pictures of. That's the end of his friend's encounter. Just like Jay said, in the exact location where he and his family came across something in the cave they explored. One thing I want to point out here is that the growling from this story also lines up with what Jay said he has heard out there at night. Also, reptilian cryptids like the one described in this story are usually seen in the desert. And it's what looks to be caught on camera by the trail cam Jay put out there. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the pictures he captured. The first picture is a Google Earth shot of the area showing all of the cave entrances in the proximity of where he and his family have had their encounters. I mentioned to him about the cave systems all across the US and how they would be perfect for cryptids to use to hide as we have no idea how far down they actually go. It's kind of like the ocean in a way. Jay believes he has stumbled across one such cave system in this area. The next pictures are a picture of the cave he and his family entered where his nephew saw the creature and where he placed his trail cam. Alright, let's move on to the pictures you've all been waiting for. The first pictures I'm going to show you are of the eye glint caught in the darkness and what looks like fur in the bottom right corner of the camera. These cameras are motion activated, so for these pictures to have been taken means something was moving around in front of it. Therefore, we can't see the creature, but we do get the light's reflection off of its eyes and also what appears to be fur from something moving in front of the camera. These pictures are compelling enough, but the next ones I'm going to show are even better. Now, as you can see in this picture, the trail cam seems to have gotten a picture of the creature's face. I'll also include the picture pointing out the facial features so you can compare the two. You can clearly see the eye to the left, and this thing definitely looks like it has reptilian skin. Left of the head is what looks to be a claw. Here is what Jay had to say about this picture. The eye is very clearly visible. The strange reptilian skin is also very noticeable. What also intrigues me about its facial features is the mouth. It has thick, oversized lips. Usually, reptilian encounters state that the mouth is thin. Something else to consider since we only have a two-dimensional picture. After studying the image, I have concluded this reptilian being has a slightly protruding mouth. Also, I know it's hard to notice, but its claw appears to have spiky hair-like or quill-like appearance. Extremely strange, but I guess that's what cryptids are, very strange in appearance. Jay also saw an image on a YouTube channel he thought looked very similar to this thing's claw in the picture from his trail cam. He says what caught his attention about the claw from the picture he sent me of the dog man was how it was shaped just like the humanoid figure's hand in his trail cam picture. When zoomed in, they look a lot like each other and it's very intriguing just how similar they really are. Now I will say I'm not sure where the image of the dogman came from, but if I had to venture a guess, I would say it is an artist's rendition, but if it was created based on someone's sighting, then that's how they describe the hand as looking. Nonetheless, it is eerily similar to the reptilian creature's hand from Jay's picture. I also want to show you some pictures Jay found on the internet of what people have described these things looking like. If you compare the pictures, they look very similar. So all in all, the trail cam picked up pictures of what looks like a reptilian cryptid. I will leave these pictures up until the end of the video. Obviously being that it's so close to the camera, Jay believes because it saw the lights on the camera and was curious what it was, it is hard to tell what exactly this thing is. 
but I will agree that the skin does look reptilian. Also, the location definitely fits, being that reptilian creatures such as this one are normally associated with and seen in the desert. Another thing that intrigues me about this is that it looks like the cave theory many people have about these beings seems to be true. As their first encounter with the thing was in a cave, and it ran off deeper into the network of caves it calls home. I have heard in a lot of stories where cryptids are seen in areas that are close to a network of caves and or old mining tunnels. As I said earlier, we have no idea how far down these networks of caves really go. It would be the perfect place for them to go to avoid being seen and the perfect place to make their home. What do you think about these pictures? What does it look like to you? A reptilian cryptid or something else? Also, I'd like to thank Jay again for allowing me to tell his story and show the pictures he captured on my channel. He is brave to put himself, his story, and these pictures out there. Make sure to give him a shout out in the comments. And please keep in mind that while I ask you for your opinion of what you see, please keep it friendly in the comments and responses to each other. Ridiculing others has no place on this channel. And that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed these stories. If you'd like to hear more stories like these and other types of cryptids, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you want to send me your story, I'd love to read it. My email is wolfwhocriedcryptid at gmail.com. I will also put it in the description below. With your permission, I may want to use it in an episode. Even if you'd prefer that I didn't share your story on my channel and just want someone to listen, email me we can privately talk about your encounter. And please remember to keep it civil in the comment section. No one deserves to be ridiculed whether they believe or not. Thank you for listening. I'll catch you at the next episode.